This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. It's a relationship. Relationship with him first, then he's working in you second. And because of the relationship that gets deeper and deeper, the desires start to change. The want to start to change. And the stuff you used to want to do when you first got saved, it don't even, it's not even on the radar anymore. You're not interested. Oh, what a day it'll be, the day you wake up and realize you don't want what you used to want. The Holy Ghost is doing that. Renew your mind, your spirit. Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael T. Smith, Gregory Diddow, and Andrew Womack. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Seats are limited, so register today. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. The Apostle Paul said something here. Uh, Galatians 1, 11 and 12. Now, here's a man who was a murderer, Paul. He reaped havoc in the church. He, he just started stuff, and he thought he was doing the right thing. The reason why he thought he was doing the right thing because, you know, he served the law. And you know, when you didn't do right, you should be punished. You should be killed. You should be stoned. He's just doing what the law said. But then on the road to Damascus, he got a revelation of Jesus, and all of that changed. All right, now watch this. He said, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Verse 12, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So Paul said, what I'm preaching about this grace, no man gave this to me. This is a revelation of Jesus. He, it's not just a revelation from Jesus. The gospel of grace is a revelation of Jesus. The gospel of grace is the good news about the unveiling of who Jesus is. Grace is not a subject. Grace is not a curriculum. Grace is a person. The day the Holy Spirit can reveal Jesus to you, condemnation, fear, guilt, shame has to cease because you can see Jesus. So the Holy Spirit has a specific purpose here. Listen to me carefully. When Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit, uh, and one of his major works in our lives is to remove the veil that once obstructed our view so our eyes can see, so our ears can hear, so our hearts can fully comprehend the specific special plans that God has meticulously prepared for each of us. Jesus ascends. The Holy Spirit comes down. His number one work is to remove the veil. Now, I've been in church a while, and I, I hear people talking about the veil. I don't know what they're talking about. Jesus was raised from the dead, and he rent the veil in two. I thought, was it, is it cloth that he rent? What, what's the veil? I want to give you a definition of the veil issue, and then from this point on tonight, we're going to start referring to it in its simplest form. So, in context, what is the veil today? It is condemnation that comes from the law that says they don't measure up to the standard. 
they are deserving of punishment and they are deserving of a cursed life. They don't measure up to the standard. They are deserving of punishment. They are deserving of a cursed life. And one word, what is all that? Condemnation. It's condemnation. So the Holy Spirit has come to remove condemnation. He has come to let you know that you deserve what Jesus has done for you, that you're no longer cursed, that you are blessed, and that you have a purpose and a will for your life. So the Holy Spirit's job is, if I'm going to get you to that plan for your life, I got to get you to see Jesus so you can be delivered from the veil, from the condemnation, from the guilt, and from the shame. The Holy Spirit is working in you right now. And everything you feel guilty and shameful about, Jesus has paid a price. And when you can see Jesus clearly, you'll see he's taken care of that through his blood. He's dealt with that through his blood. That's been washed away through his blood. You keep holding on to stuff that Jesus has already taken care of. So whatever stupid thing you've done, it has been forgiven. It has been taken care of. He's working in you right now to cause you to lose the taste for it. The stuff you're doing in secret, in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark, and you're covering up so nobody can see it but you, guess what's happening? The Holy Spirit's changing your desire. You're going to want him more than you want that, and eventually you're going to be, be able to remove the cover, and the stuff that's under the cover won't be there no more because the Holy Spirit's job is to remove the veil, to remove the condemnation, to deal with the shame. To you know what he says? This is, this is what he says about shame. He says, this is how you deal with shame. He that believeth on me shall not be put to shame. What? So am I wasting my time coming to a Wednesday night Bible study and get fed some more word? No. While you're seated here, the Holy Spirit's working on you. I am now telling you what he's working on. He's working on getting you free from the hooks of the past and walk in the deliverance that Jesus has made available for your, for your present and for your future. Listen to me. You are free. You are free. Every time the guilt, the shame, the condemnation comes up, at least start with this. I am the righteousness of God, and I've been made free by the blood. And it'll come again. I'm the righteousness of God, and I've been made free. The day you believe that, the day you believe that is the day you're going to be able to see Jesus. Now, what's the advantage of now being able to see Jesus? Now, the Holy Spirit can escort you to the plan, the path, the will, and the purpose for your life because now you believe you deserve it. But if you're struggling with condemnation and shame, you're going to always be fighting with, I don't deserve it. I don't think God can use me. I feel funny knowing I did this, and here I am in church tonight. He gets, you, you know the number of people he play that game on? How you going to go up in Bible study tonight acting like you all saved after what you did? Well, listen, everybody did something. Everybody came up here tonight with something, but that's why we're here. He is cleansing us. He is working in us. He is taking away the old desire for something and replacing it with a desire for him. He is working on your, your want to. His job to get you out from under the veil, to get you out of condemnation to get you into the freedom that comes with this grace. All right, so how do I work with him? I see what he, that's, that's, the, main, that's the main job of the Holy Spirit. Tongues is going to play a part in building you up. Every gift of the Spirit is going to play a part of getting you there. Examine yourself when you wake up any day and walk around feeling condemned. Grace is not a license to sin. It's an opportunity for freedom. It's an opportunity for freedom. But we've been so drenched with 
what you got to do in order to make that happen. And I'm telling you, you're not strong enough to do it without him. Amen. He's working in you right now. Amen. So what, what is my job? Look at John chapter 6. <clears throat> How do I work with the Holy Spirit? John chapter 6, verse 29. Let's look at it in the King James in the NLT. John chapter 6, 29. I want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. He's going to reveal some things to me. Listen, I'm not, where the Holy Ghost is going to reveal me the cure for, for cancer? That's cool, but he's not going to reveal that to you when his main job is to reveal Jesus to you. His job is to reveal Jesus to you, all right? I'm not saying all that stuff can't come, but his main job is to reveal Jesus to you. And guess what happens? When you can see Jesus, you can see wisdom. He has been made unto you wisdom. All right, now watch this. Um, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. We're so busy trying to do work to get God to do something for us, he tells us here's the work of God, believe. Now look at this in the NLT. This is the work of, you want to know about the work of God? Believe, believe. And that's something Christians are trying to make hard. Look what he says here. Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Amen. That, that, that set me free here. This is the only work he wants from you. Believe in the one that he sent. So while I'm out trying to do all of these things, trying to feed everybody and trying to, you know, help everybody, and I'll, I pause and say, wait a minute. The only, not to say, see, my love is going to move me to do those things. And then when I do those things, I do it out of my heart and not because I'm trying to get something from God or I'm not doing it so I can get God to do something for me that he's already done. I remind myself that this is the only work that God wants from me, to believe in the one he has sent. And so I ask myself, do I believe in Jesus? Do I believe that he has forgiven me of my sins? Do I believe that I have access to the finished works of Jesus Christ? Do I believe I'm already healed, I'm already delivered? I'm all, do, what do I believe? Because real belief is going to be tested when you're in trouble, we see you at rest. Rest authenticates belief. You really believe? Well, rest. Quit struggling and sweating, trying to get something to happen that Jesus has already made happen and learn how to rest in the finished works of Jesus Christ. If you want his best, then you got to learn how to rest. That's the highest form of faith, resting in what Jesus has already done. The only work that God wants is to believe in the one that he has sent. Now, that's going to take renewing the mind because we have been religiousized in churches to do things to earn something from God. And we just cannot believe we can get something for Jesus without having to do something to earn it. That's dead works. And the blood of Jesus has been shed to deliver us from dead works. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to help us in this area. All right, now watch this. Go to uh, Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 13. Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 13. Man, I feel my metabolism going. Boy, I got a sweat going on. The Holy Ghost helping me to lose this gut. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his holy name. All right, now watch this. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So the only work that he wants from you is to believe God, and then he says, work out of you. Let's look at, let's look at this in the NLT. He's working some stuff. He's doing some things. He says, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. 
obeying God with deep reverence and fear. All right, the results of my salvation. How do I display the results of my salvation? I just told you. Rest. Watch this. For God is working in you. So what he's saying is, that doesn't mean you work. He says God's doing the work in you. God's working in you, giving you what? The desire and the what? And the power to what? All right, now, so now let's back up just a little bit. How many of you want to do what pleases God? All right, very honestly, watch this next question. How many of you can recall where you had a set of things that you were going to try to do to earn that? If I did this as many times, how many times I need to do this? Maybe if I fast three times a week, maybe, maybe that'll please God. Maybe, maybe if I'm just nice to people I don't like, that'll, that'll please God. You just came up with any kind of way because you were hungry to please God, all right? But look at what he says. God is working in you. That's the Holy Spirit. God is working in you. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working in you. I have to believe he's working in me. All right, now listen to me carefully. What I get in your business, I'm going to try to describe this. So if I just hit at home with stuff with you, I don't know by the natural that it's you. So if you don't get up and run out, won't nobody know I'm talking about you. If you have this desire and you've been having it, I want to stop smoking weed, but I can't. I want to stop looking at porno, but I can't. I want to stop sleeping around, but I can't. It's not that you can't, okay? These are habits that are formed from a sinful nature that was never dealt with through the renewing of the mind. So think of this. God says, I want to do a work in you. And he says, before you can see that work done in you, I'm going to have to work on your desires because everything you're doing that's been tur that turned into a habit, everything you're doing that's turned into a habit is first a desire. Okay? So, so it's, look how wise that is. If I can change your desire, I will impact your habit. Right? Now, You try therapy, no problem with therapy, awesome. You try talking to people, no problem with that, awesome. But sometimes you come out of those natural means still with the same desire. It's kind of like as long as you're there getting the treatment, it's good. But as soon as you cut off, you sit there long enough, or an emotional thing happens, or the same kind of situation presents itself, you know, there's normally an atmosphere for that type of sin. You normally do something when the conditions are right for whatever you do. But that desire. So here's, here's the game changer. Huh. The Holy Spirit, when Jesus left, came, came into your life for the specific purpose of working on the desire. What desire? He says, I'm going to give you the desire and the power. The word power is ability to get the job done. So the Holy Spirit is going to give you the desire, then he's going to give you the ability to do what pleases God. You want to please God, but you know the thing you're doing in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark, you know that's not pleasing God. You know that's not God's best. I'm not saying that stuff sends you to hell. But it's, sure, it's surely going to make it difficult to live a life waking up in shame, going to bed in shame, waking up in condemnation. Even though Jesus has done what he's done, you can't enjoy any of it. And that's why it says, I, 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 the blood of Jesus was shed to deliver you from dead works so you can serve the living God. It's difficult to serve the living God when you're feeling like you're li living a, a, a double life or you're feeling like I'm covering up my wound, I'm covering up my habit, I'm covering up my addiction, and then I'm just going to, you know, play church. Well, that's not going to last but so long. Because what happens, anytime you cover up something, you have no choice but to produce a false identity. So you come around people with the fake you, and eventually you start believing that's you. That ain't you. That's the identity. That's the false identity you allow people to see through the cover. 
But one day you're going to move the cover. And when you, and, and listen, the, the wound you fail to deal with is the wound that's going to deal with you. It never, you can never get healing by covering stuff up. Just cover it up, cover it up, cover it up, cover it up. Whatever remains, whatever, whatever you continue to cover up, is, it, it becomes a problem, okay? No matter how, how, no matter how hard you smile, no matter how, how loud you pray in tongues, no matter how many times you jerk. I look at people real careful when they're, when they're jerking, running, and looking like they're having some kind of a fit. I'm thinking, some ain't right there. That's a release right there. They're working hard to try to feel good. Not always, but most of the time. And this scripture says, God's working in you. Man, you got to believe that. I believe God's working in me every day. I believe God's working in me every day. I believe God's working in me right now while I'm preaching. I believe God's working in me when I go home tonight. And I believe he's working in me in, in the morning. Over a period of time, you're going to recognize, oh my goodness, the thing I used to desire, I did not even thought about it. I don't even want it no more. And you, you look back and you're like, oh my God, it's been three months. You follow what I'm saying? God is changing your desire. God knows how to change your desire. Sometimes we think, well, he can't do that by himself. You know, like the Bible says, God helps those who help themselves. That ain't what the Bible says. That's what Benjamin Franklin said. I done told you a hundred times. Here's what I need you to believe. God knows how to change your desires. And he wants you to believe in the one that he sent to change your desires. You know what he, he needs from us? I believe that God is working in me right now to change my desires. Somebody says that's too simple. See, you, you don't need... You, some people take things that are so simple and make them so complicated. I believe that God will not only change my desire so I can have the desire to please him, so I can want to please him. See, to get to the point when you get the want to please him, there's just certain things you're not going to do, not because it's a heaven and hell issue. There's certain things you don't want to do no more because your relationship with God has grown. And anytime you have a relationship with somebody, there are things you don't want to do that you know will displease them. The relationship is behind that. When you're married and you're in love with one another or do that, there's certain things you, you, you don't just do what you used to do. You think about this. This is going to hurt. I, I want to please them. I don't want to do things that, 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 that won't bring them. The same thing. So here it is. This stuff I'm talking tonight, it doesn't work without a relationship. We're trying to be like God without God. We're trying to have religion without grace. <laughs> None of that works. It's a relationship. Relationship with him first then he's working in you second. And because of the relationship that gets deeper and deeper, the desires start to change. The want to start to change. And the stuff you used to want to do when you first got saved, it don't even, it's not even on the radar anymore. You're not interested. Oh, what a day it'll be, the day you wake up and realize you don't want what you used to want. The Holy Ghost is doing that. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all think, you, I don't even know what you have for dinner. The Holy Ghost is changing you. I prophesy, I declare it, I speak it unto you right now. The Holy Spirit is changing your desires because of the relationship. Because of the relationship. It ain't that deep. It ain't that deep. What you desire today that may not please God, that is not going to be your desire all the time. It's not. Why? I trust him. He's working in me. That's why he said in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him. Seek him in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Seek him in all your ways. And watch this. He will begin to direct your path. Some of y'all in a metamorphic state right now and don't even know it. Some of y'all changing and don't even know it. The, that's, that, that's, somebody said it ain't much. It's something. <laughs> you might have had an interchange tonight, but you're on your way. <laughs> He's working in you. But now watch this. Once you notice your desires have changed, it's going to get to a point where 
well, I don't want to go to church, or I don't want to feel, I don't feel like getting in the Word right now. I don't have a desire to hear anything about God right now. Can't we just rest? And then somebody say, you, 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 don't you love God? <laughs> I love God. Don't you love God? What's wrong with you? Are you tired of going through the motions and never seeing results in your life? It's time to embrace the positive change God wants for you. The seven message series, Changed by Grace, is designed to help you finally see lasting results for a love gift of $40 or more. You can receive the entire series. The most important thing a born again person do is to renew your mind. Why? So you can see Jesus. Every study time, I see him more. Every prayer time, I see him more. You're being transformed every time you see him more. And one day you're going to look at him and you're going to look just like him. Jesus provided everything I need. He died on the cross, so I, I would have everything that I need today. And I don't have to do anything but just believe. Or for just $55, you can also receive a four-message series, New Depths in the Holy Spirit. In this series, you'll learn how to cultivate a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. Call today or visit the website below to order. Renew your mind, your spirit. Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar. You got to have your own relationship with Jesus. Taffy Dollar. I receive the gift of grace. Michael T. Smith. Let me give you news. You are not in the flesh. Gregory Dittow. It's the equalizer of every human being. And Andrew Womack. Being sensitive to the Lord can change your life. Your life will never be the same again. It changed your mind, heart open. It's just life-changing experience. You can't miss it. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 6th through the 10th. Register by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting CreflodollarMinistries.org. Seats are limited, so register today. We are always praying for our viewers, but I want to pray a special intercessory prayer for those of you watching right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for those who are viewing this broadcast that you will remove the shame, the hurt, the blame that the enemy puts on them as the accuser of the brethren. And I pray that they will walk in their authority as the righteousness of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, and I declare that all is well. Everything is going to be all right. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to receive that right now. No matter what you're going through, I believe in a God who's already finished the work. It's already done. And by faith, you receive the finished works of Jesus. We love you and God bless you. Whatever you need today, no matter how big or small, bring it before the Lord in prayer. You may request prayer today by phoning in or posting your prayer request online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you, partners and friends, 